Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, September 6th. So today we have the moon in Libra again here all day. And of course, the whole point of the moon being in Libra energy is to lighten the mood. We like to stick in the light, fluffy, shallow end of our emotions, if you will. Although a lot of the times that doesn't happen, we do want to find peace, harmony and balance within our heart and head, our inner realm versus our outer realm, the old version of self versus the new version of self. And of course, we want to find all of those things in our relationship dynamics as well. The thing about it is, is that we tend to experience the extremes with the moon in Libra energy in order for us to experience those extremes and again try to find the sweet spot the middle ground the common ground that we will be basing our mind and our emotions off of moving forward so of course we try to stay in the light fluffy vibes but it is going to be a little bit difficult especially in the second part of the day here today the beginning part of the day, we have beautiful energies, harmonizing, putting us in a better mood, better perspective, better vibe. The last part of the day, though, we get a little bit into the darkness, a little bit into the funkiness. But of course, we shouldn't resist that. It is going to illuminate where it is that we're feeling trapped, where it is that we're feeling overwhelmed, where it is that there is an element of extreme and chaos. And of course, we're going to use that as a framework to adjust because of course we're in Virgo season and adjustments are the name of the game. So there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Libra energy going to try beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. Jupiter is in Gemini energy in air sign, Libra in air sign. Thus we get a trine. A trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction, a little bit of growth, a little bit of happiness, a little bit of optimism, a little bit of confidence with this new option, with this new opportunity that we're feeling pretty good about. Again, Jupiter trying to expand our mental plane, adding some, let's call it air or head pressure. We are in Virgo season ruled over by Mercury. There's a lot of pressure on the head at this particular point in time because we have to feel that pressure in our headspace to identify the problems in order for us to fix them. Jupiter is bringing a lot of growth, a lot of, let's call it magnification on the areas, on the options, on the opportunities that we have for change, for transformation, for growth, for evolvement. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is now retrograde in Taurus energy. We have Libra energy, Taurus energy, both being ruled over by Venus. And of course, Venus at this particular point in time is in her rulership here in this Libra energy. So essentially, Uranus energy is bringing in aha moments. It's bringing in epiphanies. Because he is retrograde, this is a good examination of our physical realm where it is that, again, we're desperately holding on to the old, to one once work that of course isn't working anymore isn't providing us with the safety security stability happiness and joy that it once did and the whole point of uranus's retrograde is to illuminate where it is that we're holding on to the old but yet we're praying for the new but yet not doing anything to create the space for the new to actually come into our lives so this particular energy, emotionally speaking, going to put us in a new mood, in a new attitude to see things differently, to feel a certain way about letting certain things go. And because of that, we're building towards being bold and brave and courageous enough to make a spontaneous change to take a calculated risk. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. So we love air and water working together because that's the electrical force to our creativity. And so again, with the moon kind of interacting with Saturn in a positive way, we're not getting this harsh reality check, but what we are realizing is where it is that we have a new vision, we have a new goal. And because that new vision and goal is definitely exciting us and inspiring us to make a change, to pivot, to create something new, again, Saturn helping us to wrap up the old, helping us to deconstruct the old, get rid of it, remove the debris so that we have a clean slate to start building upon. 
The moon is then going to come into an opposition, sitting directly across from Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy. So, of course, the moon in Libra, we typically speaking are again trying to stay in the shallow end of our emotions. We want everyone to get along. We want everyone to be happy. We want everybody to have fairness and justice and pleasure. But of course, we're thinking about everyone in this Libra energy, while Chiron, of course, in the Aries energy, is only thinking about ourselves. Now, that is not a selfish thing. Chiron is retrograde in order to help us examine the parts of self that we've abandoned, the parts of self that we've been putting on the back burner to put other people's wants, needs, and desires ahead of our own. And because we've been doing that, we've really been doing a disservice to ourselves, and we have to examine why. Why do we give other people the power? Why do we not give ourselves the kind of worth, the kind of value that we so easily give to other people's wants, needs, and desires? This opposition is going to illuminate where we have to strike a balance between doing what we need to do for ourselves while still honoring the love, the commitment, the obligations, the roles, the responsibilities that we've made to other people. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, who is in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the zodiac. And again, we're still very much trying to get Mercury up to speed. He's still in his post retrograde shadow period until the 11th. And so we're pretty close to moving into new foreign territory, but essentially we're still kind of retracing our steps. We're reframing situations and circumstances of the past. We're rebalancing the scales between our heart and our head. And of course, with the moon being our heart space and Mercury being our head space, at least they're getting along. And because they're getting along, we have this air energy from Libra, we have this fire energy from Leo, and that creates a sudden burst of excitement, of inspiration, of opportunity to see growth and healing and evolvement. And if we're in a situation where we are communicating with the people with the world around us, we're definitely going to be a little bit more expressive with our thoughts and our feelings. Again, we typically stay in the shallow end, but we're, we're really heart motivated with that Leo energy. We're bold, we're brave, we're courageous in our communication styles, talking about our ideas, talking about our emotions emotions, our affections, and of course, the people pleasing qualities that come from Libra and energy, trying to keep that conversation as deep, as affectionate as it may be on the lighter side of things. So again, we want to keep in the positive realm of being a chatty Kathy, of getting our heart and head on the same page. And in our communication, our interactions with others, we're just trying to be supportive and optimistic with whatever it is that is being said. Now, again, we're taking a little bit of a not so nice shift here in the latter part of the day. So for example, around 7.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to feel the scales that the Libra energy rules over tip in a not so nice direction, not so nice favor. The moon in this Libra energy going to make a very harsh interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. So basically what we're getting here is a certain amount of confusion. Just when our heart and our head were working together, just when we were staying in the most positive, optimistic realm of perspective of emotions that we could possibly get, suddenly we are realizing where we're holding fear, fear of letting those things go. Fear of detaching to what is tried, tested, true, and familiar. Fear of closing the door on a particular chapter, even though we've known we've outgrown it. And so now the confusion sets in. Now the not so nice narrative sets in and we find ourselves kind of, you know, orienting to the funkiness, if you will, of our emotions and of our mental plane. So the one aspect that doesn't involve the moon here today involves the sun. The sun shining very brightly in the Virgo energy is going to make a very awkward interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde now at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. So this is Earth on Earth energy. And we know that Earth energy makes us very aware, very present in the here and now, very aware of our physical bodies, very aware of our physical environments, especially with the heaviness, the weight of what isn't working. Now, you'll often hear me talk about how we enjoy Virgo energy and Plutonian energy interacting because Pluto examines the deep seated programming and conditioning in our psyche, while the Virgo energy rules over the lower level intellect 
our mental plane that our ego depends upon. So normally we can unearth where there's been a conditioning or a programming that is holding us back. And then once we realize that the Virgo energy helps us to flip the script into something a little bit more positive, a little bit more encouraging. Again, Virgo energy, we focus on the problem so that we can fix it. The Virgo energy requires us to make adjustments to our energy, to our mood, to our attitude, to our mental plane, to our narrative, to our perspective. The thing about it is, is that Pluto He's going to illuminate for us again, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that we are experiencing now realizing, especially because he's now in the Capricorn energy again, that this is the final hurrah. We are wrapping up some karmic chapters that we initiated back in 2008. We've been learning these particular life lessons the hard way. And you would think that there is a little bit of an excitement to kind of, you know, hurry this particular completion cycle up. However, we also know that it's going to require us to be bossed up versions of self sometimes bringing certain I'm going to call it intense transformative chapters to an end is the scariest of things because we got comfortable in the drama we got comfortable in the dysfunction we got comfortable in the pain and we it we became almost familiar with it it's predictable but when we wrap certain chapters up and when we really grow and elevate and evolve to new versions of self sometimes it's the scariest thing because once we close the door on this we don't know what we're walking into as far as foreign territory goes we don't know what awaits us we don't know how to navigate unchartered land, if you will. Now this Capricorn energy, we know it all too well. There is a part of us that can't wait to put this particular chapter of our lives behind us. But again, the unknown is far scarier to most people than sticking to what has been, what will continue to be, even though it's not comfortable, it's familiar, it's predictable. And that's where we're going to find a lot of the energy, especially with the collective fixate from now until November realizing what we have to put behind us, realizing what we have to wrap up, and then also realizing the resistance that comes up within us when we are at these particular juncture points in these particular situations with all of these karmic chapters coming to an end that guess what? We're blocking our own damn selves. We're, bro we're blocking the progress. We are essentially drawing out what we need to be wrapping up and that doesn't feel good. So the sun shining a very bright light in this physical realm, in our mental plane, in our emotions, in the Virgo energy, we need to detox from these negative belief systems, from these fears, from these doubts, from these insecurities. And Pluto, of course, he doesn't mean to torture us, but he does take us down a trip. Let's call it down the darker path of memory lane to illuminate all of these fears, doubts, and insecurities because we have the power to change it, to transform transform it into something that is going to support us. Again, reminder, Pluto's whole mission is to turn the pain into power, to turn that darkness into light. So the last thing that we have going on here today, of course, is the moon in Libra and energy going to make an awkward interaction, a very tension filled interaction, if we do say so myself, with Neptune. Neptune is retrograde at the 29th critical crisis degree of his rulership in Pisces energy. Thus, we know that the moon in this Libra energy is nearing the end of this Libra energy as we prepare to move into Scorpio energy, which is a whole forecast in itself that we will wait until tomorrow. Basically, the moon is finishing up her time in this Libra energy. There's always an intensity when we're nearing those final degrees. And this interaction with Neptune is definitely going to destabilize us because, of course, Neptune is about our spirituality, our dreams, our creativity, our intuition. This is not a positive interaction, which means that, again, the scales are being tipped in a not so nice direction. We're sitting in the funk. We're sitting in the darkness. We're not trusting our gut. We're not trusting our intuition. We forget what we're fighting for. We forget what all of this work is about. We become so overwhelmed with what needs to be done that we just want to check out. We have this escapism type of feature that comes with Neptune, whether he's retrograde or not, in the Pisces energy. And so the minute that we kind of realize the darkness, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, we lose ourselves in that. 
And we kind of create more of a situation and a circumstance to create anxiety around that. We kind of lose, again, the goal, the vision, the dream of our higher self. And we fully kind of jump back into the pain and trauma of the past that, of course, we've grown out of. But now it's like picking a scab off in order for us to revisit those topics and themes. And we become so overwhelmed with it that, again, we just want to curl up in a ball and kind of check out. And so we're not going to be in alignment with our intuition. We're not going to remember what all of this energy, this, you know, spiritual war is all about. We're not even going to remember the goal, the vision, the dream that we were excited about just earlier on today. And we have to sit in that funk because again, the whole point of this is to face your shadow self, to become such good friends with your shadow that you don't cast that particular part of you aside and instead you integrate it so that you can operate from a state of wholeness.